It's the Too Dumb to Quit podcast with Jeremy McCall. He's dumb, way too dumb to even quit. So, you know, he has his own podcast now. Oh, and I welcome you back to it. It's your old pal, Jeremy. It's the Too Dumb to Quit podcast. And it is what it's Tuesday. Yeah. To which you might say, hey, uh, old hop along Macomb there. I don't give a fuck what day it is. <laughs> and to that, I agree. But uh, that is the focus of the podcast today. Our fucks and why we continue to give them to things we don't care about. Going all the way back to the beginning, in the beginning of creation, the good Lord said, let there be light, and immediately the universe started complaining all around. Jeez, Lord, hey, a little bright out there, isn't it? To which the good Lord replied with the universe's very first, I don't give a fuck. (laughs) And since then, the Almighty was kind enough to give each one of us a certain number of fucks to give for our time here on Mother Earth. Maybe I'm paraphrasing uh, the story a little bit, but I'm pretty sure I got it right. And I'm also pretty sure that (laughs) I'll probably get some shitty messages about it. Regardless, what I'm trying to get at here, people, is we have fucks, and we get to choose where we give those fucks to. Now, we all know people we can look at and go, wow, I cannot believe that dude just did that or that lady just did that. Like... Paul just told his father-in-law to quit being an asshole. Man, that guy doesn't give a fuck. Or, uh, hey, guys, Jebediah's got a flamethrower, and he's burning down the whole fucking village. That guy doesn't give a fuck. (laughs) Or my personal favorite, hey, guys, did you guys hear last weekend that Doc brought his pregnant girlfriend to his wife's birthday party? Holy shit, Doc doesn't give a fuck. Now, (laughs) there's a type of freedom to that, when we see people who truly seem to not care. And this falls somewhat into line with the stoic life philosophy that I talk about a lot. But I feel like our non-fucks given are often, or no fucks given, you should say, uh, are often misunderstood to not give a fuck or maybe more eloquently putting it, being indifferent to things that make no difference It's not an excuse to be lazy or to sit on our ass or to live in a gray kind of a, I guess when people hear the word stoic, they think of somebody who doesn't give a shit about anything, which is totally the opposite. But I don't give a fuck world of indifference is that grayness, that laziness. Not giving a fuck, it actually means the exact opposite of that. The only indifference we should be giving should be to things that make no difference. The weather, it's raining, it's cold, it's hot. Who gives a fuck? You can't control it. Go out and do what needs to be done. You're fretting about your morning run because it's raining. That's excuse making. Your mind tells you it's raining and I don't want to get wet because being wet isn't fun. (laughs) Well, at least in this instance is what I'm talking about. But that's when we have to say, look, I don't give a fuck if it's raining or not. I'm running. Not giving a fuck isn't an inaction. It's focused action on what matters and not giving our time and attention to things that don't matter. If Grey's Anatomy gets canceled, is it worth losing your shit over? Who cares? Little Billy screaming in the uh, entryway because his shoes are red and they're not the red ones that he likes. I don't give a fuck. Billy, get in the car. <laughs> right? We fall into this pit of fuck giving too many times. We care what people think or what they say or what they do. And Marcus Aurelius, uh, in his book Meditations, which was his journal keeping, if you don't know much about Marcus Aurelius, he was the emperor of Rome. I talk about him all the time. And I think everyone should read Meditations. It's, uh, he says in there as a note to himself, tranquility comes when you stop caring what they say or think or do, only what you do. 2,000 years ago, he wrote that. Bob at work calls you an asshole. Jamie down the road thinks you're a piece of shit. Who gives a fuck what those people say or think or do about you? Whatever they think about you and their opinion of you is their problem. You know who you are. You know your character. How they feel, it's not in your control. Their opinion of you, out of your control. What they think about you, isn't, it's out of your control. What is in your control is what you do. The actions you take or don't take in response to what people say or do to you. 
that's control. That's what you can control. And I'll be honest. I used to say, I don't care what people think about me or what they say about me. But deep down, I did. I wanted to be accepted. We all want that. We all have this this need to be accepted by the club until we realize that we're comparing ourselves to people who don't inspire us. They're not the people that you even respect. And once I really found the way to to switch that I don't give a fuck switch for real, the important things in my life got so much clearer. My wife, my kids, my small circle of people who are ride or die with me from the jump, these guys and, and gals have been around me for so long that I could put my trust in each of them. Those are where my fucks go now. And not to what rumors say or what assholes gossip about or stress from work or what's happening on Music Row. Shit that I used to care about, it goes away. My wife, my kids, my small circle of people. And knowing we just have to do our best. Abraham Lincoln said, uh, uh, where is it? Uh, I do the very best I know how. The very best I can, and I mean to keep doing it so until the end. What is said against me won't amount to anything. If the end brings me out wrong, ten angels swearing I was right would make no difference. Meaning there, there's no right way to do the wrong thing. We have to do our best with the best, you know, with, with the best information we have at the time. And that's what we do. And I think that's what's so admirable about this concept when we see it in other people. Mark Manson wrote a book called The, the Art of Not Giving a Fuck. <laughs> it's actually what it's called. And it's all about the overcoming adversity. The staring failure in the face. And, uh, and as he says, shoving your middle finger back at it. The people who don't give a fuck about adversity or failure or embarrassing themselves or shitting the bed a few times. The people who just laugh and then do it anyway because they know it's right. They know it's more important than them and their own feelings and their own pride and their own needs. They say fuck it, not to everything in life, but they say fuck it to everything unimportant in life. Uh, to find our way to not give so many fucks, we have to uh, have something in place more important than the adversity that stares us down. Are you really pissed off about some shit some asshole politician said on TV? Or are we just filling a space with garbage that could be filled with purpose? A spot in our lives that could be filled with something we really, really give a fuck about. Passion, something we love, helping somebody, finding a way to make a difference in people's lives directly around you. That's worth the fucks you give. Our attention and our fucks given should be treated like the money in our wallet. You wouldn't roll down your window when you're headed down the freeway and just throw the money out that you had out into the wind. So why do we do that with our attention? Why do you do that with your time and your effort? We have just this allotted time in this place. And our only guaranteed time that we have is this present moment. And you have to take your fucks and you got to invest them wisely into things that will bring you a big return on fucks given <laughs> and for the time you're investing in them. Now, I'm not a numbers guy, but I can tell you that much. Invest your fucks into something that mattered to you. It's free. It's, a, it's so freeing to begin to see the world as it truly is that we have to stop wanting to fight or change nature. And that's when... We end up finding ourselves stressed and worried and depressed and let down and heartbroken. But when we start to see things in nature happening as they will, as it always has, it takes that weight off your shoulders. Um, I don't have to know it all. I don't need to be this or to be that to be happy or, or successful. If you take a step back and look that you're happy right now, realizing all of those things, it just eliminates unneeded stress and fear and wishful thinking. And we have to make sure that we're not making excuses for ourselves. We have to be honest. It starts with us being 100% honest with ourselves. If we skip uh, working out for a day, you wake up and you go, oh, m you know, well, my leg was hurting. Well, let's be honest with ourselves. I fucking slept in. I feel like shit about it. I'm going to do better tomorrow. We got to start with honesty with ourselves. And when we say, I don't give a fuck, but we do, 
We're not helping ourselves. We're just putting on a front for the people around us. Wow, man, Jimmy doesn't give a fuck what that guy says. And then you walk away going, oh, man, I'm fucking stressed. And you're feeling like shit, and you take it out on other people. But you can't tell anybody why because you've already told everybody you don't give a fuck about that. We have to start, it starts really at dissecting the things that are bothering you. Why is this a thing? Why is this under my skin? Can I control it? And if the answer is no, then you can't stress about it. You can't. Can I control this? No. Okay, I'm not going to stress about it. It's going to go in the I don't give a fuck box because I can't control it. If the answer is, yeah, I can control it, then I'm not going to stress about it either because I can directly control it. I can put the work into it. The only time I'm going to be stressed is if I'm lazy. If I'm in control of having to get an assignment done before I head back to work or school or my job, I've got some shit I need to do, and I fuck it off through the weekend, yeah, I'm going to be stressed out come Sunday night because I know that I didn't do what I needed to do. I didn't do my best, and I didn't give the fucks the attention that were deserved for the things that really mattered. So dissect the things that are bothering you. We have to stop allowing things that don't make us better to bother us. If this isn't a thing, if I can't control this, I'm not going to stress about it. I can directly control only what I can control. So right now, wherever you're sitting, I want you to sit back, take a huge, deep breath, and think about the things outside of your control. Doing what they do. Nature. All around us. The weather. The world. Whatever it is. You have to start to change our perspective that nature isn't fucking us over, which we like to talk about, but it's not standing in your way. It is the way. We have to find the current of acceptance for things that we can't change, accepting the things that we can't change, and getting in the current in this river of nature, and you'll begin to feel you don't have to row so hard to get shit done, to feel better, to be happy. Because you're accepting nature for what it is. The world is the way it is. And in that current, you're going to be able to see the obstacles coming your way. To which you will be prepared to look at these things as opportunities to get better. Or an opportunity to further yourself. To truly not give a fuck about things that aren't important. So, we've talked about it before. You lose the job promotion. Good. It's going to give me more time to get better for this. That's the obstacle there's the opportunity. I got a flat tire on the interstate. Where's the opportunity? You can find the opportunity to get better in anything. Because um, when you can see those obstacles coming your way, the, the, the ability to not give a fuck comes so much easier because you're focused already on what's important. So Anyway, that is my Tuesday soapbox here on the old podcast. Hey, outside of this, I do want to recommend a couple things. If you're into the Stoic philosophy, it's changed my life in everything that I do. So I would recommend check out a book called The Shortness of Life by Seneca the Younger. It's a quick read. It's an impactful read. I, uh, not a huge reader, before I got into Stoicism, I had to force myself to start reading. Once I did, I haven't been able to set these books down. There's a couple that I have within two feet of me at all times. The Shortness of Life by Seneca is one of them. It was given to me, actually, on the road by a musician. Um, the other one is Ego is the Enemy by Ryan Holiday. It's such a great, such a great book. Um, and then the one that I quoted today, the, the Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck by Mark Manson. So uh, check those out. A huge thanks for you guys for giving a fuck about my ridiculous little podcast here. And thank you for listening. If you enjoyed it or you laughed or you feel compelled, make sure you help me out. Subscribe to it. Share it on your socials. Share it with your friends. And uh, over on the old Instagrammy, make sure you follow me at Macomb Over. That's M-C-C-O-M-B-O-V-E-R. <laughs> Macomb Over on Instagram. And on YouTube, uh, we're uploading videos all the time. I just released a new Frontier Rock video of us uh, playing up in uh, Idaho when we were recording my live, uh, when we were doing the live video for uh, Cotton's Getting High. I've got a new single coming out February 5th called Withdrawals. So you can see all the videos over at youtube.com backslash official Jeremy McComb. Thanks for giving a fuck today. It's the Too Dumb to Quit podcast. I'll talk to y'all soon. <laughs>